how to use YouTube for realtors. If you want to know how to do nearly $30 million in volume with clients coming directly to you using nothing but an iPhone, then you are in the right place today. We're going to be breaking down tactical strategies of how an agent, AK Ali out of Dallas, Texas, was able to build a top producing real estate business with clients coming directly to him every single month, turning into closed deals. Now, Ali is very analytical. He's very detail oriented, and he explains very thoroughly the nuances of what he did that allowed him to separate himself from other agents and how you can do the same. We're going to be breaking down Ali's recording process, the exact videos that led to closed deals, as well as some of the tactical piece of advice that you need to understand if you want to start on YouTube in order to build massive momentum and not just get views, but rather turn those views into clients and ultimately close deals. So two quick things before we start diving in, because this one is packed full of value. Number one, I'm going to be linking all of Ali's content down below because the incredible thing is that he's not just built one YouTube channel, but multiple YouTube channels that have thrived and seen massive success. And the second thing is Ali's a wealth of knowledge. So if you like the value that we provide in this video and you want to talk to him one on one, feel free to click the link in the description where you're able to book a call directly with him on Zoom. So without further ado, let's give you the blueprint of how you can build massive momentum and close at millions of volume every single year with clients coming directly to you from YouTube. What's going on, guys? Welcome back to another incredible interview. Today, we're going to be diving into all things YouTube with an agent that did almost $30 million in production with his channel. And we're going to be breaking down how he's been able to do that and what you can do in order to achieve success like this in your market. So, AK, what's going on, man? Excited to have you here. Man, I'm super excited to be here. Thanks for having me. Of course, this is going to be exciting. You've obviously, you know, not just thrived with your local real estate channel, but you've got experience now building other channels as well. So I think it's safe to say that you've got quite the blueprint that people could be able to follow because you've not just done this once, but you've now done it multiple times, which is, again, a repeat behavior showing that you actually know what you're doing, which is exciting. So, you know, before diving in, maybe just give people a bit of a breakdown as to who you are, where you're from, what you've done, and then we'll start diving in you know, straight to the, the tactical information that they can do to start generating, you know, multiple eight figures in uh, volume every year from the channels. Awesome, man. So uh, I'm, I'm in the Dallas Metroplex area. So we, we service all of DFW. So that's, that's my market for the real estate stuff. Right. And I started my YouTube channel, I'd say around 2019. So it's been, it's been a few years. And when I was starting again, you know, zero subscribers, zero viewers just had, but I knew other agents were doing something similar, just not in my market. So I thought, you know, it's, as long as the process works, you have to just trust the process. It's slow, but it happens, right? So, you know, I, I started making videos, not getting a lot of views, not getting a lot of views, but then once it built up momentum, it was just mind blowing because now leads are, leads are coming in on autopilot and these are warm leads, right? There are people that have been watching my stuff for months and months and they call and reach out when they're ready. So there's not a lot of follow-up and things like that. So when I, when I started back in 2019, it was, it was kind of cool because I was, I was consistently putting out like one video a week. I'm like, okay, I, I need to get that consistency down. I got to put in my reps. Right. And when I started doing that again, for the first six months, you know, Crickets chirping, not not a lot of activity going on, but you know, slowly the views were increasing, people were watching. And and I think I closed my first YouTube lead seven months after I started the channel. So it took a while, but man, once it started going, I had to hire agents, I had to hire showing agents, I had to, I had to build out a bigger team because we couldn't handle and I couldn't handle the amount of business that was coming in just from YouTube. Right. So, you know, over the past few years, I've built out a few channels. Like right now I've got three, I've got one that's got close to a hundred thousand subscribers. So I know how to scale YouTube channels to a higher uh, subscriber count. My real estate channel, you know, it's, it's decent for the local market. I've got about 5,000 subscribers on there that consistently watch my stuff. And then I've got a new channel that I just started where I'm helping other realtors do what I'm doing because you know, it's like sharing is caring, right? It's like collaboration over competition. If I can help others do what I'm doing, because it is super easy, yeah. right? And if I can show them the blueprint that I've created, right? And that channel is super small because I just started it a couple of months ago. But guess what? I'm not giving up because I know the process works. I've done it and I've seen others do it, right? 
So I think it's just, you ha just have to be consistent. Yeah, hundred percent, man. And I think that's, that's so important. Again, as mentioned in the introduction, I'm going to be linking that uh, all of AK's channels below because I think that one that he's put out uh, recently about showing other agents how to do it is absolutely incredible. Your videos are, are stellar. So that's going to be a wealth of knowledge for people looking to, again, have more tactical information and dive a little bit deeper into the very specifics. But, you know, getting started with that journey, I think it would be really important to kind of help people understand, like, you know, what type of content were you putting out in, in the beginning and what was maybe that turning point that you, you felt started to pick up momentum as you were going through that production focused channel so well you know majority of my content even right now I've, I've kept it very consistent from the beginning because once you find your tribe once you find the people that like your content it's like you you see a pattern don't keep changing it up right so a lot of my videos are very information based about the local real estate market so i'll talk about what it's like to move into this area what are some of you know how are some of the schools rated what are some of the nicer neighborhoods what are the price points in those neighborhoods it's very information based so to some people it seems like it's it's very dry because you know i'm i'm not, I'm not one of those guys that that's going to be dancing on the videos and doing all of that stuff right it's like to me my videos are super short they're you know they're roughly between six to eight minutes if if not shorter and they just provide just there's just content there's not a lot of fluff material so uh, when when people reach out one of the things that attracts them is hey you know what you weren't just blabbing for like 25 minutes all of your stuff was solid so we knew if we were going to work with you you're not going to waste our time yeah. right so so it's just a lot of it is is talking head videos where i'm just giving them statistics and giving them information about the area and then the other side of it to keep the variety going, because I don't want people to just get bored. I also, I've been putting out uh, house tours. Those are very effective. And also um, also neighborhood tours, just showing them the community because a lot of people that start searching on YouTube, they don't live in the area. They're looking to relocate somewhere else. So to them, just a drive, drive of a neighborhood makes a lot of sense because they want to see okay this is this has potential so when they're coming when they're flying in for just a couple of days to look at neighborhoods they're not wasting time in places they don't want to be so a lot of it's just in information based and just showing them around the city I love that. And I, I think one of the things that, you know, I'm sure you've found and many others have found as well that have kind of approached uh, their journey leveraging platforms like YouTube is that in order to do these value driven videos, in order to do neighborhood tours and community tours and, and market updates and different things like that, you have to be pretty well versed in the information related to that specific piece of content, meaning that I find it starts to help increase your knowledge and your understanding of the market based on the research you might have to do in order to create a proper video. And it starts to help you become more of like a market expert, if you will, because of the fact that you need to actually learn this information to put out a video that's going to provide value that somebody will reach out to you with. Absolutely. And, and, and I'll give you an example, right? So there's this one neighborhood in Frisco that I did. I did a neighborhood tour of and I did I did the. Uh, to the home tour of two of the model homes of the builder that was building there at the moment, right? So when I when I put up that content, guess what? I got to learn their floor plans. I got to learn stuff about the community amenities, stuff like that. And right after I put out that video, dude, like within, I think within three to four weeks, I probably sold five homes in that neighborhood. Yep. Right? So, and, and, and the best thing about this YouTube stuff, right? It's, it is a search engine. Yeah. Right. And that I I don't think a lot of people realize that, but it is the second largest search engine on the planet, which is owned by the number one search engine on the planet. So guess what? A lot of the video content that I put on on YouTube, it shows up on Google searches and it's evergreen because guess what? That neighborhood is going to be there 10 years from now. So yeah. if I'm optimizing my videos properly, right, and the keyword is properly, if I'm optimizing them, guess what? Two years down the road, three years down the road. Yeah, the builder won't be building there anymore, but people are still going to be taking the neighborhood tours. People are still going to be looking that stuff up. So once I create that content and if it's evergreen content and it's not just trendy stuff, it provides leads for months and years and years. Like I just recently had someone reach out to me from a video that I put out three years ago about moving to Dallas. Okay. Three years ago, it's got like 37,000 views on it so far. And these guys are like, hey, we just saw your video like two, two weeks ago and we're coming into town. Dude, talk about easy prospecting, right? It's like yeah. it's that stuff is doing the work for me 24 hours a day.
I love it. And and I think, you know, that goes back to creating massive leverage. And I think that is a really good segue into one of the most important things before we kind of dive into like your content creation process and best practices. But like, are there any specific videos that you know of that have led to those closed deals? Because I think as you're alluding to, like not just optimizing your videos properly, but putting out the right content, because a lot of people do really lean into like, what they think they should be putting out, which is like the trendy videos or stuff of like, you know, I see very generic videos, how to prepare your house to sell. Well, not many people searching that and especially not many people in your specific market. So is that really the type of content you want to be putting out? From an agent's perspective, it sounds obvious, but right. that from a high search volume perspective might not be the right type of content to be putting out. So what have you found to be the content, like exact specific video topics that have led to people reaching out to you? So uh, some of some of the best videos that I've put out that I know have gotten a lot of uh, clients out of is, is home tours because people specifically ask for that particular floor, floor plan with that builder that they're interested in, okay? And then for people that are relocating here, it's stuff like pros and cons of a certain city right mm -hmm. things to, to know before you move to a certain city right that kind of stuff it just it starts getting them curious enough to watch your other content and and that really gets them to it because when people start when, when they're going to move to a completely new city they've never gone to right what are they going to they're going to want to know the good and the bad and i don't mind highlighting the bad of the city because it builds more authority and, and more transparency with the audience, right? You don't want to just be selling, selling, selling on these videos. You want to provide content and build that trust. Because when mm -hmm. you're building that trust, it's it's they're going to know they want to work with you because you they know you're going to look out for their best interest, right? Yeah. So, you know, pros and cons of a city, great. What's it like living in a particular city? That's worked out really well for me too, because this way people know, hey, the, this is the entertainment that's nearby. The, these are the kind of schools. This is where we can go shopping, right? So those kind of videos have directly gotten mm -hmm. me clients and people, because wh whenever I get on a call, when I get on a consultation call, I always ask them what they've watched. Yeah. Right. Because when you measure what they've watched, which is getting you this, the, the leads and the, and the clients, you can, you can double down and you can put out more content like that. I love it. And I think that's one of the things that makes you so powerful with YouTube. And, and we'll get to this later is, you know, your ability to take a very data driven approach and understanding that what gets measured gets managed and being able to make calculated decisions on how to improve. I think before going down that avenue, a lot of people are, are genuinely curious as to like your entire process. How are you finding the video ideas? How are you recording them to stay consistent? And what's kind of your process in terms of maybe how much time are you blocking off? When are you recording? All those different aspects that go from like idea to actually posted. Okay, so let, let's take a step by step on that, right? So the first thing, like I'm, I'm, I'm a big believer in the Trello board. So yeah. I, I, I use, I use Trello for, and I've got my different columns. So the first thing I do is I, I come up with a, I come up with an idea of, okay, this is, this is what I need to make. But the way I do the research is I, I use tools, man. There are tons of tools that are out there. Okay. I personally love using vidIQ. So I use vidIQ yeah. for that stuff. Right. So I'll, I'll put in a keyword. I'm like, okay, I want to, I want to target this particular neighborhood in Frisco or Dallas or whatever it is. I'll type in that keyword. I'll see what kind of searches there are, what, what kind of competition there is. So one, one of the things that I, th I think that'll be a great takeaway for a lot of viewers on this is especially when you're starting off, don't go for keywords or key phrases that have 20,000, 30,000 searches a month. You're not going to rank. Okay. The sweet spot for that stuff that I found is between 800 to 1500 views or searches, mm -hmm. 800 to 1500 searches a month. That's very little. It's super micro niche, but these are long tail keywords, which you can actually rank for as the new channel. Okay. Yeah. So, so when you do, when you first, I'll, I'll do the keyword research. I'm like, this is the keyword I want to, I want to hit up. Then one of the one of the things that I've, I've been coaching and mentoring a lot of other realtors to do this stuff. And one thing that I've noticed that's become a pattern with a lot of these people is they'll come up with a video first, they'll write up the script, they'll record it, and then they're going to sit down and be like, okay, what should I title this? What should the thumbnail look like? I'm like, no, bro, you got to reverse engineer that stuff. Yeah. Okay. So the first thing I do after I've come up with what I want to make is I come up with the title first, and then I come up with a thumbnail. And then I'll write out a script or the bullet points that I want to go over. Same. Okay. Because this way, 
you know, if if a title's not catchy, if a thumbnail's not catchy, you're not gonna get clicks. If you're not gonna get clicks, people aren't gonna see the the content that you spent all this time creating anyway. Yeah. Right. So then I'll I'll create I'll create the title. I'll I'll come up with thumbnail ideas, and then I'll I'll basically script out. And I'm one of man. Okay. So secret. I get very tongue tied when I'm just going over bullet points when I'm trying to record content. So all my stuff is fully scripted. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Sometimes I'll go off the script a little bit, but I'm a big believer in, you know, I want to, I want to have my straight thoughts out. I want to script it out. And then I use a teleprompter and I basically, I've just gotten with practice. I've just gotten much better at reading the teleprompter where it looks natural. Yeah. So I'll, I'll script everything out and then I'll, I'll do about, I'll, I'll, I'll do this process. I'll, I'll time block and I'll come up with all of this stuff in one day. Okay. So one day, boom, this is all I'm doing. My Calendly is blocked out. No one can make appointments for me that day because it, this is important. This is my prospecting. Okay. Yeah. And then I'll record, I, and then I'll do like four to six videos. I'll, I'll batch them out and I'll record all of them in one day. Mm -hmm. And then once, 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 once that's done in the beginning, I was doing all the editing and everything myself. Now I've got an editing team and a thumbnail designer and all of that stuff. So I'll, I'll pass all that stuff out so I can focus on other things and then I'll, I'll schedule them out. So this way the consistency is still there, but I'm not making videos every day or every week. So I'll, I'll do like one month's worth of content in two days and that's it. Now I can focus on my business. I love it. It's the same that I do. Like today's a Saturday. Every Saturday I block off 8.30 a.m. to 2.30 p.m. to record a non-negotiable because that is my prospecting as you alluded to. You hit the nail on the head because so many people treat it as like an afterthought or a nice to have and they're not treating it with the same discipline that they would if they're properly prospecting in the traditional sense. This is just a modern approach to prospecting that actually creates leverage but people freely negotiate this time in their calendar you know, instead of creating a creating a, a system around it. Now, before getting into some of the best practices and, and your tips for advice, I think one of the things you've done better than almost anybody that, you know, we've kind of talked about YouTube with is that data, looking at the data driven approach. And I do this religiously. I every single month block off a couple of hours to look at the data and the analytics in YouTube and take a calculated approach because if you're not listening to your audience, how are you going to know what they want to see more, what you want to see less? If a lot of people take this like spray and pray, throw spaghetti at the wall, see what sticks approach to say, well, I'm just going to put out this. Well, what if you knew what you were putting out was going to connect? And I think not enough people do that. So why don't you talk about your approach to looking at some of the data and the feedback on your content to make calculated improvements that start to help you get more clients? So the first, the first thing I'll definitely get into is don't worry about your subscriber count, okay? Because as as you're growing your YouTube channel, you're gonna be getting views, but not everyone's gonna be subscribing, right? Like yesterday, I, I put out I put out a new YouTube short, okay? It got almost a thousand views in a day. It only got two subscribers, yeah. but 998 more people watch that content. Mm -hmm. And now that they've watched this content, when I put out the next piece. If they showed interest in it, they're still going to see it, even though they haven't subscribed to it. So, you know, when, when I'm doing my analysis, what I've noticed is 88%. Yeah. 88% of my views come from people that haven't subscribed to my channel. Mm -hmm. Right. So guess what? All these deals that I'm closing, they're not coming from that 12% that have subscribed. You never know who's watching your video, right? You just never know. So don't, don't worry about the subscriber count because that's, that's really not going to matter in the long run. It's great to be like, Hey man, I've got all of these subscribers. Great. But are people watching and enjoying your content? Right. And then the other thing with, you know, when looking at the data is when, when people take the time to comment on your videos, it's like, don't, don't ignore it. Like these guys are actually like, they're watching your, they're, they're your audience, you know, say thank you. Like as a simple thing as just saying, Hey, thanks for watching goes a long way because they're like, Oh my God, this person actually responded to me because yeah. man, as much as we hate to say this and it feels awkward saying it, we're like celebrities, you know, at to a certain point, because when people watch us on video, they build that connection, right? So, so, you know, interacting with your audience is, is a big part of, of looking at the data because when you see, okay, you've got 15 comments, take out 10 minutes, respond. And when it's a customized response, it builds that relationship. 
And I'll, I'll give you another example of this. So um, I, was, I, I put out this video about a certain neighborhood in the Frisco area. And um, I, I got a comment saying, hey, can you make a video about this neighborhood? I easily could have been like, hey, let's get on a call. Let's chat about that neighborhood. But I'm like, you know what? I'm going to make this video. So I made a video about what this person had requested. Once I put it up, I put that in the in the replied comment. Other people saw it. Now, YouTube started picking up in search, so it got a lot more views. So I was able to leverage my time based off of the feedback that I got off of that person. And now other people that want to know the same information, the content is already out there for them to see. Yeah. Right. I love that. I think it's, I think it's so important. It's so, you know, heavily underutilized. Like I, we reply to all my comments as well. And I think, you know, I actually see what people are saying and I care about what people are saying because that is going to tell me what people want to see more of and what they might not engage with. And, and I think all too many people, especially when it comes to YouTube, almost feel like they are that celebritized figure and and they almost take it for granted to the point where they don't take the time to acknowledge their audience and they think they're too good for the comments and it's not worth it it's like nope. you would not have the views of the audience if you didn't have those people that are commenting like you owe everything to those people that are commenting which is why i cherish every single comment that comes through and we do our best to respond to every single comment even though we get thousands a month and i think that's one of the things that will help people see like AK is the guy to go because if they write a comment on somebody else's, you know, page or video and they don't respond and you do, that shows that you see them. And that's all people want is to feel seen, heard and acknowledged. And when they can, they're going to reach out. So I, I love that you've done that. Yeah, no, man. And that, and that's, that's what separates you from others that are out there too. Right. Because when, when people see that you care, right. It just, it just builds that bond, man. It's like, and it's, and, and it's so easy working with those people. Right. And, yeah. and the best feeling, dude, you have no idea. Like it's amazing when, because I've been licensed for a while. I've just been in the YouTube game a few years, but I've been licensed for, for quite some time. And it's a whole different feeling when someone sends you a text message saying, Hey, I'm interested in buying a house in this area. Do you have time to work with me? Can you take me on yeah. as a client? It's a game changer, man. It is a complete mm -hmm. game changer. Yeah, I love and, it. It's it starts to to again, I think because of that feeling that people have when they see somebody on content, now you get to safeguard your time because you have people coming that want to work with you. And and the people that don't reach out are the people that wouldn't be a good fit anyway. And I think that's where you know, a lot of people don't really build a scalable real estate business is they just freely negotiate their time. They treat their time as like, it's just disposable. And if people want to meet, they want to meet and nobody really respects their time. But when you can start to earn that respect, like you do, when, when you're putting out content, people know you're busy. And when they know right. you're busy, they respect your time and they're not going to waste it. And I think, you know, you've, you've excelled at that big time. Yeah. And, and, and you, YouTube, YouTube has, has been key to that, right? Because it's just, you it's you you can't leverage yourself if you're not using these modern modern techniques to do this stuff right because there's only so many phone calls you can make man there's only so yeah. many phone calls right well i think you know tying this again full circle i think there's a couple things that are important to touch on the first before we get into like your best steps and best recommendations would be what are some of the biggest mistakes because i think you know both you and i have seen just through our own journey some of the things that don't work so well some of the things that other people struggle with like what do you see are some of the most common mistakes people make when it comes to trying to do youtube for real estate but mm -hmm. they really struggle to get the traction and the tangible results they're you know i'm sure you see this all the time like i do is people that have put out content for like six months or 12 months and they're still not getting any traction and that's one of the things that's important is you know the there's a caveat to the saying that consistency is key consistency right. is key if you're consistent with the right activities and doing yep. it right but if you're consistently putting out content that's not optimized the wrong videos the thumbnails a note that you wouldn't even click on you could put out content every week for the next 10 years and not get a client so what are some of those mistakes that you see i i, I see lack of focus you know that that's the biggest thing and not having a direction i see so many realtors that will make, you know, they'll have, they'll have, you know, real estate related videos sprinkled around and then they'll be like, Hey, watch, watch, watch me barbecue the steak. Yeah. 
I'm like, if you, if you want to show people, bar, start up a second channel and then lead people into this channel, letting them know you're a realtor, but don't put you barbecuing steak or going grocery shopping into a, a real estate focused YouTube channel, because guess what? YouTube's algorithm is not going to pick that up. They're not going to know who to send your content out to. So the lack of focus and direction for that particular channel, I, I see that a lot. Okay. Yeah. And then another mistake that I see, and this is where the title and the thumbnail come in, is whatever the title is, people will put that exact same text on the thumbnail. Mm -hmm. I'm like, no, the thumbnail needs to make people more curious about what the content is. So when when you've got this long, long title that needs to be search optimized, right? The thumbnail needs to relate to that, but create curiosity. Right. So they need to work together as a pair. It doesn't need to be a complete replication of one or the other. Then the other thing that I that I see a lot is just people will give up way too early. Mm -hmm. Just way, way too early. This this is the long game. If you want to set up yourself for the future, this is prospecting that's going to work for you forever. But it's going to take time to kickstart. This is this is not instant gratification. You're not going to get a million views and go viral your first week you're putting out a video on YouTube. Okay. You have to let it build. You have to let YouTube understand your content and, and so pick it up in the algorithm to push it out to people. Okay. And then the other thing is people will spend all of this money on camera equipment when they first start <laughs> and they're not going to, and they'll be like putting out like one video a month. I'm like, you know, just putting stuff out is better than perfecting it because that's how you're going to hone your craft. And this is a craft. So it's like until today, until today, I still record on my iPhone. Mm -hmm. Could I not get fancier equipment? Yeah, but I'm comfortable with it. It keeps me consistent. So you have to know what's best for you. So I still record on my iPhone. The quality of the camera and the camera on the new iPhones is amazing. And but that gets me going and it's easier for me, for me to record. So not getting paralyzed by that, you know, par paralysis by analysis, right? Not doing that stuff. That's, that's another thing that I see a lot of agents do. It's like, but you just have to, you just have to put it out. And it's like, now I've got, I've got a short, short form team that cuts up all my YouTube stuff into like stuff for YouTube shorts and things. And my editor, he goes, Hey man, um, we can't use any of your old content. I'm like, why? He's like, because you're a completely different person on camera than you were three years ago when you started. So I'm like, you need to make more new content that we can chop up for you because we can't use the old stuff. People are going to know this is not you. So, you know, the point that I'm trying to make is a lot of realtors that are, that are starting to like start on YouTube. I'm like, give it some time, put out content as much as you can. So you put in the practice. So you get better. Your first video is going to look like crap. Yeah. Right. Like, dude, can, can can you look at your own videos from the past and not laugh? Oh, it's it's atrocious, but it's hilarious because it's like, right? you know, what we do now would never exist if that didn't happen. And and I think a lot of people are, you know, that's one of the biggest things that I think people struggle with is they're comparing their chapter one to our chapter twenty. I've put out thousands of videos, so of course I'm gonna have a little bit different of a delivery skill than people that are putting out the first video, but they're saying, I want my first video to look like your 1100th video. And that's not reasonable. And, and you shouldn't be doing that. I think a lot of people are way too hard on themselves and they set themselves up for failure from day one because of this comparison. And that comparison has no tangibility to it. There's, there's no reason why you should be comparing yourself to that. And then sometimes you'll find those rare anomalies that are good on camera from day one. But the issue that you're not seeing is usually they have prior experience in front of the camera before they got into real estate. So they put the reps in, in a different avenue. I don't know a single person that hops on camera and crushes it from day one. And yeah. that's, a, that's something people need to understand is that the only way to work towards that perfection, if you will, is to make progress. And the only way you can make progress is repeated action over an extended period of time, which means you have to start, you know? Yeah. And, and, and I'm, I'm going to go back for a second about, you know, the mistakes that I see, I totally forgot this one. And I think this is super, super important. All right. I see a lot of realtors making YouTube videos about stuff that they want to make. Yeah. And I feel like sometimes that is a huge mistake because you are not your audience, mm -hmm. right? It's like make videos based off of your client avatar, figure out, okay, who's your audience? 
What do they want to watch? And how much knowledge do I have in that? Right? So, it, you know, that that's that's one of the biggest mistakes that I see is like realtors putting out stuff about, you know, just just stuff that 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 they would want to watch. I'm like, no, nah, man, it's it's about the audience. The, you'll find success on YouTube if you really come from the giving mentality, right? And and you're you're there to serve because as realtors, we are there to serve. That's that's what we do. Yeah. So even when you're making content, just give away everything. Like don't gatekeep anything because there are a thousand, you know, anyone can Google and find stuff now. So when you're being completely transparent, giving away all of your information that needs to be given to your audience, they're going to build that trust and they're going to come to you when they're ready. So make, make videos that are focused on your audience and not on you. I love that. That's, that's so powerful, man. I think that's such a great way to pull it together because that almost ties in all the biggest mistakes, but recommendations of what people need to be doing in order to improve. So, you know, one of the things that I always like to end with is, you know, we're now business partners and, and people now have an opportunity to get your direct help in order to help them scale by leveraging YouTube because you've decided to partner with us. So I always like to have a, a bit of an idea as to, you know, what made you make that transition to something like EXP and our group specifically and what can people expect when they partner with you? So, you know, it's 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 funny when when I when I when I saw the EXP stuff, when it was actually properly explained to me, that's the key. Like <laughs> I I dude, agents from EXP had been trying to get me for for like three years because they knew, you know, the kind of volume I was doing. And I'm like, mm -mm, not for me, not for me. Because it wasn't properly explained to me, yeah. right? So when I when I saw your stuff and I was like, okay, this is cool. And then it's it's funny how usually people, you know, groups will interview agents to see if they're a good fit. I started interviewing EXP groups. I'm like, who's gonna be a good fit for me? Because I know the value that I bring. Yeah. Okay. And then I talked to some local groups over here. I talked to some in another place. And then I found you on YouTube. And what connected me with your group, number one, dude, the value that we have in the wolf pack no one's got like people have no idea what we offer until they look inside and see what we actually have to offer right and then and then the other thing was when i when i saw you you're like okay youtube youtube, YouTube. i'm like dude you're you're you know you're growing your audience and you're attracting agents by the same means that i've done with clients so we spoke the same language when it came to that right so i'm like okay there's a connection then when i got on a call with you i'm like bro like bros, right? It's like yeah. the, the connection was there, right? I felt like I was home. So, you know, once 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 I looked into the whole EXP concept and, and so much of it is about collaboration over competition, where now I can really put out all of this information. I can personally one-on-one -on -one mentor and coach people on the things that I'm good at that can help them grow and it can change their lives. Mm -hmm. That's beautiful. Because guess what? If I did the same thing at my previous brokerage, zero i would get absolutely yeah. nothing and then i'd have people in my same marketplace competing with what i'm doing but now even in my marketplace or anywhere worldwide i can coach and teach and i can give people my exact resources along with all the resources that comes with the wolf pack and these guys can take their business beyond what they could have ever imagined so that attracted me i'm like you know what now it is it is time to make a change it is it's about time that we get the word out about how easy this stuff is and that mm -hmm. anyone can do this so i'm super excited man I've been, I've been personally coaching people on this youtube stuff and i see their growth and it's just it's just it's just so fulfilling yeah i i agree man i think that's the cool part is like you know, you attract the type of person that you are. And the fact that we both speak the same language, it just makes sense for us to work in harmony. But there's so many people that are also going to want to do what you've done. And the fact that they could just partner with us, get all of it for free, all the support, all the coaching that they would usually have to spend thousands a month to get access to. Like you can't compete with that. And you have people that have actually done it. And I think that's what makes you and I unique is that there's other people that have thrived with YouTube, but they haven't really been able to translate that as a duplicatable process to help others. So they've done it, but if they can't help other people do it, then it's not really that valuable. But a lot of people also complicate it. Like I love that you say that it's so simple because everybody makes it seem like it's this unicorn mystery from you know the heavens of how to, how to do well on YouTube. It's really simple. You just have to know what you're doing and we thankfully know how to do that at scale for every type of person in every type of market. 
Absolutely. And and dude, I'll 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 tell you I'll tell you this funny story. So, you know, for the same stuff that we're providing for free in the past, because I'm like, okay, like you know, I can't partner with anyone, all of this stuff, because I wasn't with the XP at that time. I have charged other agents ten thousand dollars just for me to teach them how to make videos on YouTube. And yeah. and agents have willingly paid that much because if you really think about it ten thousand dollar for for an agent when you look at this kind of potential in marketing isn't much it's one sale of a three hundred fifty thousand dollar house at three percent commission yep right so i've charged up to ten thousand dollars for this kind of stuff and now we can provide it for free they have access to me whenever they want they have access to you and the entire group right and our facebook group for the wolf pack it's amazing all the resources and all the masterminds that that you put up for all of us right it's the value is just crazy. And especially with the new social Academy, right? The, the three point it's amazing. Cause now people have a blueprint that they can follow step-by-step in -step bite-sized content. And it's just so easy to duplicate. It's so easy to duplicate. And I feel people need to understand this is not rocket science. And the thing is, even if it was, we've broken down yeah. where it is, people just need to click, 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 follow, follow, follow. And they'll get the success that we're getting because it is it is not that complicated. Yeah, and and the cool part is they can get it in a fraction of the time because we've made the mistakes that we could teach yeah. them to not do, and now they can do it you know exceptionally well. So you know, okay, and it's free. I, exactly, man. I, I appreciate this so much, and I think again, you're just such a wealth of knowledge, and and we'll have to jam it again on on some of the deeper topics. But I think you know this was such a great way to help people understand the foundation, what to do, how to get started, what to avoid, and what they could do to take immediate action today to start to see tangible progress in their business. So I'm going to link all of AK's information below. As always, you want to make sure to check out these channels, especially the one that he's recently released, because he's putting out tips and strategies every freaking week, showing you how to do you know incredible results on YouTube. So AK, thank you for coming on, man. I really appreciate it. Thanks, thanks for having me, Mike. It's been great. You bet. Thanks, guys. Right. Take, Take care. care we'll see you in see the ya. next video.